Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Citycom video, we're going to be discussing a short piece of information from Silicon Studio, which has popped up um, as an interview on Gaming Bolt. So we're going to do a bit of analysis on this. Um, we're going to go through the quote first, and then we're going to go into how this actually impacts things. So this is regarding primarily ESRAM, and we started developing Yevis 10 years ago, he starts out. For each new platform, they're doing 16 currently, uh, we ported it to, we have been ke keen on extracting the highest performance by taking advantage of the speci uh, specifics of the platforms. So for the Xbox One, of course we use the ESRAM for internal calculations and internal buffers. Now he moves on to the PlayStation 4, where he says the unified memory architecture is less of a need for us since everything happens on the GPU. So. Right there, you actually get some important piece of information. Um, what basically this is telling you is that in situations where the GPU is not really um, needed to fetch a lot of data from the CPU, the, in other words, it's not using like humor, um, which we'll go into in just a moment. So basically, GPU, GPU computing, the ESRAM is actually not too much of a hindrance and the unified memory of the X of the PS4 which of course means that the CPU and the GPU can both address the same memory space there's not a super advantage there now there are certain advantages certainly um, for example it means that you have to be less cautious of what's being utilized in ESRAM in the case of the Xbox One because there is a finite amount of memory and Microsoft themselves said you need to be really selective of this they actually one of their uh, points actually of the uptake of ESRAM and I'll go into this in just a moment or if you want a lot more information of this you can check out the link that I'll place in uh, the video description where I go through the uh, Xbox One Developer Day Conference uh, which was hosted by Microsoft and AMD and they basically said yeah um, we expect basically certain render targets to be partially held in ESRAM and the rest of it can be held in DDR3 so for example the sky or pretty much static type of objects which don't really require a lot of detail they could be uh, placed in DDR3 memory that type of thing uh, so anyway let's put a little bit of meat on this a little bit of substance Yebis the engine it's a middleware and it's used a lot for particle effects and post processing now this goes back to his statement where he says most of this happens on the GPU. In other words, these are post-processing effects and because they're not utilizing the CPU really, all of this is really being handled in the GPU. That's why the unified memory architecture is less of a big deal. So one of the problems I have with this article piece on Gaming Bolt actually is it's a little bit clickbaity if I'm totally honest. Um, it actually says that I quote uh, the Xbox One ESRAM four buffers unified uh, memory of the uh, PS4 is actually somewhat irrelevant. So it's like I I kind of don't like that because it, this actually feeds into a lot of the the fanboy wars that are happening right now, and I don't really think that that's healthy to be honest. Because what starts happening is people fixate purely on the on the tabloid headline, if you will, and instead a lot of the information that's buried inside the quote gets ignored. Now, Yebis, the engine, it's actually being utilized by a lot of different things right now. Square Enix are using it for, for example, the trailer for Final Fantasy XV. And indeed, if you were to mosey on over to their website, I'd recommend you Google it because it's quite a long URL made by the guys over at Silicon Studio. But it is a Japanese website, but they do have an English like section, so that's why I'm just recommending you Google it rather than me telling you the URL. And uh, they're using it's being used on titles like, say, MotoGP, um, whatever, what other games is it? Dynasty Warriors Seven. Um, Agnes Philosophy, Monster Mon Piece, and various other titles as well. Uh, Valhalla Knights. And it could do things, I mean, this is just 
a small amount, but motion blur, accurate motion blur, uh, various HDR in always high definition range, different post uh, processing anti aliasing techniques, and all the other bits and bobs that you'd expect in next generation hardware, and it plugs in because it's middleware at the end of the day. So I think you should take this news piece as not necessarily the Xbox One or the PS4 do something better. It's just an interesting little bit of information. For those of us who are wondering, like, actually what the pros and the cons are for titles. In other words, it gives us just that little bit more informa information and insight onto the optimization strategies that developers will probably have to utilize in the future with the machines. Excuse me for my voice sounding just a little bit weird in this video, guys. It sounds weird to me when I'm speaking anyway, um, kind of nasally, because I'm getting absolutely ravaged to hell with uh, Hay Fever right now, which is extremely irritating. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.